and then from Dandasana across your right leg in front of your left leg. So um, this is also where you need to let me know. It depends on your screen settings. I think that I'm mirroring you. I should be doing my left side when you're doing your right side. But if anybody sees it the other way around for some reason, please do let me know because I can adjust it um, with you the next time. There's just a little setting in Zoom, but I'm going to carry on mirroring. So your right leg crossed in front of your left leg. And again, if your knees are much higher than your hips, it means you need to sit on height. If you have any um, hip things or knee things and you are seated on height, then you can roll your blanket and you can bring your blanket to support your shin bones so that your knees can totally settle when you're here. And then take your hands and move your buttock flesh back so that you're seated on the knuckles of your sitting bones. And just let your hands rest onto your thighs and let your thighs descend down to the earth. Elbows drawing back. And then for a moment, just looking straight ahead. So not even at your screen, but just straight ahead at eye level. And when you feel ready, then just let your top eyelid close onto your bottom eyelid. Just drawing your attention inward. just becoming aware of the foundation of your posture so upper buttock area descending down inner groins descending down and then broadly let your abdomen spread back to your lower spine and up in the direction of your chest bring your shoulder blades deep into your back body to lift your chest up Smile your collarbones open and let the tops of your shoulders release and relax down your back body, away from your ears, away from your neck. And now bring the palms of your hands to touch at the center of your heart. This equal pressure of your two hands as they come together and draw your elbows back and down so that you lift up your armpit chest area. Soften your throat. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue. And let your eyes very gently soften in the direction of your heart space so that your eyeballs release away from your eyelids backward and then your eyeballs roll down in the direction of your heart space crown of your head just easing upward towards the sky and then within the structure that you've created with your body just allowing your breath to move in its own natural easy rhythm And just with complete sincere honesty, just noticing how you're feeling. There's no right or wrong way to feel. You're just learning to honor yourself in the moment as you are and learning to feel where, you know, your body might be a little contracted, feeling where the breath might be a little bit contracted. And by allowing it, you're actually letting it open up. And we will open with one chant of on. Exhale completely, empty your breath. Inhale deeply. Um. And bow your head to your heart. Take a moment here to just make your own internal acknowledgements. And then release the backs of your hands onto your thighs. Very softly let your eyes open and then raise your head back up. 
And then from here, stretch your legs out back into Dandasana. Just opening up that space behind your knees and then change the cross of your legs. So bring your left leg in front of your right leg. Again, I'm just mirroring you. And just stay seated as you are. You should be able to see from there. It's a very basic way we're going to start, but stay seated for now. So we're going to start in Supta Padasana, lying down first with the knees bent. And then um, have a look here. So you're going to pull the mat with your hands so that your upper buttock area can slide down. So your hands pull towards your feet. So you get that length in your lower back. And then from there, coming into uh, Supta Padasana. And then we'll change sides with the hands. And then from there, when we come up, we're just going to rock backwards and forwards, keeping the head in line with the spine. And you can either rock up to seated, or if it's possible, rock up to standing. But just be aware that if you're doing that, there is the possibility of going backwards. So you might want to keep your hands on the floor or just kind of keep your hands backward. Okay, but we'll get to that in a moment. Come and lie down on the length of your mat. And bend your knees and let your lower back rest into the floor. And then take hold of your mat with your hands. So you grab hold of your mat with your hands and pull your mat in the direction of your feet so that your upper buttock area slides down towards your heels and you get that length in your lower back. So as you grab your mat and you pull your hands down, you should feel that length come in the lower back area. And now straighten your legs out, bring your feet together, inner ankles, big toes touching, knees touching, and roll your inner groins down to the floor. Reach your arms up above your gaze where you can see your hands and then bring your right index finger above your left index finger. Interlock your fingers right at the web and then invert your palms, push your palms up and now bring your arms up and over your head. So you stretch the full length of your body, press the fronts of your thighs to the backs of your thighs so you open up your knees. And then extend your heels of your feet and your heels of your hand in two opposite directions, away from each other. So full length in your spine. Yeah, very nice. Rolling the outer armpit area up to the sky. And now in a half circle, exhale, release your arms beside your body. Keep your legs active and engaged and together. Reach your arms up above your gaze once again and cross your left index finger now above your right. Invert your palms, push your palms away from you and then bring your arms again up and over your head. So stretch the heels of your feet, the heels of your hands away from each other and really focus on the length in your spine. So this is the beginning of just creating that internal space. So letting your upper buttock area descend down to your heels, broadly spread your abdomen back and up and get that lift of the organic body. So we're not only working on the muscles, but we're also working on our organs when we do the yoga. Exhale in a half circle, release your arms beside your body. And then hug your knees into your chest, keep your head in line with your spine and begin to rock your body forward and backward. Continue like that until you get enough momentum and you're going to choose you're going to either rock up to seated or you're going to rock straight up to standing and if you seated then you just come up from there to standing so whatever works for your body nice if three people got up nicely so for those of you that arrived a little bit late your orientation of your mat is um if it's possible in this orientation so that when we, you stand in the middle of your mat you actually face me or you're facing, facing your screen. And then come and stand with your feet together, your big toes touch, inner ankles touching, exactly like what we did on the floor. And reach your arms out in front of you. 
Bring your right index finger above your left, interlock at the web of your fingers, invert your palms, and then bring your arms up once again. So now we're doing the same that we did on the floor, standing up, and roll your inner groins back, keep this upper buttock area drawing down, so you lengthen the lower back. Remember how you felt when you were on the floor and you got that length? Abdomen broadly back and up. Shoulder blades into your back body so that you lift your chest up and roll this outer upper arm area forward while you pull your forearms back. We worked with that quite extensively last week. Full length of your spine. And now stand into your left foot and lean your body over to your right side. Look down to the floor and bring your left ribs forward and breathe into the left side of your body. Inhale, come back up to the center, stand into your right foot. Now lean over to your left side, bringing your right ribs forward. Look down to the floor, extend your arms, fully stretch your arms. Inhale, come back up, stretch your arms up. And then exhale, release your arms in a half circle, coming to stand. And then again, feet together, knees together, draw your thighs up and reach your arms forward. Morning, Anal. <laughs> reach your arms forward and then bring your left index finger above your right. And again, invert your palms, straighten, lock your elbows, and now bring your arms up. So focus on fully stretching your spine as best you can. Make space between your spinal vertebrae. And as you take your upper buttocks down and you get that length in your lower back, there's more of an ability to suck the abdomen broadly back and up. And with that, you're lifting your organic body, actually giving your organic body a bit of a facelift. So it's like an internal space that you're creating. And then once again, stand into that left foot and now bend over to your right side, bringing your left ribs forward, fully stretch your arms. Look down to the floor slightly, breathe into that left rib cage, left lung. Inhale, come back up to the center and now exhale over to your left side. So looking slightly down to the floor, bring those right ribs slightly forward and breathe into the right side ribs, breathe into that right lung. Inhale, come back up to the center and then exhale, release your arms in a half circle, letting go. And now from there, come to sit down again. So same arrangement that you did earlier on. If you were seated on blocks, please do so. Come into Dandasana once again and make sure that you're facing your screen. And then cross your right leg in front of your left leg in the middle of your shin. So Swastikasana, it's, it's different to Supasana. They're different variations. But this one is in the middle of the shins, okay? Um, have, a blank, uh, have a belt handy and make a loop in your belt um, around about the size of your length of your thigh. So like that. Those of you who need support for your knees if they're not settled, and it also supports your hips, then you can just bring your blanket again so that it's on your shins and it's supporting your shin bones. And now from there, take your buttock flesh back, so you're seated on your sitting bones. Reach your arms forward and then bring your right index finger above your left index finger once more. Last time, invert your palms, stretch your arms up. So find maximum length in your spine. Again, upper buttock area descending down, abdomen, draw it back and up like you're lifting the whole of your organic body up. Relax the tops of your shoulders down your back. And now on the exhale, release your arms in a half circle. Walk your right hand in line with your right hip over to the side. And then bring your left arm up and all the way over your ear, turning the armpit to face down. So that means this hand, left hand is facing backward. Sit your left sitting bone down as you're stretching over to your right side. And now turn your abdomen, turn your chest. And if it's okay for your neck, then turn your head up. Breathe into the left side of your body. 
Inhale to come back up. Walk your left hand over in line with that left hip. Dropping the elbow if possible. Otherwise, just bending the arm. Right arm up and over. Armpit facing down. So for some of us, it means that you've got to face your right hand backwards. Sit into that right sitting bone so you get a nice counter stretch. And then from there, turning the abdomen, turning the chest. If it's okay for your neck, even turn your head. Otherwise, look straight ahead. Breathe into the right side of your body. Inhale to come back up. And now this is where you might need your belt. We'll just all start with one. And if you find you don't need it, then the next round, when we come back into this, then you don't take it. So take your loop of your belt or your scarf, whatever you've got available. Put it around your left thigh so that it comes into this left front groin area here. If you can't see, you can come a little closer, but here it's around this left thigh. And then bring your right fingers behind you, fingers facing away from you, and hold on to your right knee with your left hand. Lift your spine, but continue to look forward. And now wrap this right arm around. If it's possible, you take hold of the inside of that left thigh. Otherwise, you've got your belt there and you're going to hold onto your belt. So both hands are, have something to pull against. And then from there, pull with your hands, elbows out to the side, and now turn your abdomen, turn your chest, and turn your head to look over your right shoulder. See that you in the center line of your body your crown of your head above your pelvic floor. And with each inhalation, lift your spine. With each exhalation, you turn more around. So you're either holding onto the belt or that inner left thigh so that both hands have something to pull against. And then from there, release. Now take your belt around your right thigh. So again, you want it to come into this front groin area and maybe you need to make it smaller or bigger depending on what you experience now. Take your left fingers now behind you, facing away from your body. Take hold of your, uh, right, your left knee with your right hand. Lift your spine, look forward for a moment. And now wrap this left arm around and either hold on to the inside of your right thigh or hold on to your belt. So whatever you need, pull your elbows out to the side and pull with your hands to turn your abdomen, your chest, and your gaze to your left side. And be sure that you're in the center line of your body so that your crown of your head is balanced above your pelvic floor and you're spiraling around your center using your breath. So with each inhale, find a little bit more length in your spine. And with each exhalation, turning your body. And then from there, release. Remove your belt. And now take your hands over to the side, wider than your shoulders. And walk your, claw your hands forward and lengthen your spine forward. Some of you might be able to rest your head on a block or on the floor. But Keep both sides of your trunk lengthening equally, and especially your front spine. So from your pubic bone to your breastbone, lift and lengthen forward. Tops of your shoulders releasing down your back, away from your neck. Just keep your crown of your head in line with your spine. Eyes soft. And then inhale, come back up. And now from there, release your blanket. If you have one around your shins, straighten your legs out. Dandasana, making space behind your knees. Again, if you have any knee issues, just take a scarf behind one of your knees, whichever knee is bothering you. Cross your legs again in the middle of your shins. So swastikasana. Take a blanket if you need it. Readjust your sitting bones. And we're going to repeat all that we, we just did, just on the other side. So from here, reach your arms forward. Take your left index finger above your right. Invert your palms and stretch your arms up. So full length in your spine. 
If you see me looking this way, I'm just looking at the bigger screen. That's it. Make sure that you're, for those of you who are a bit flexible, make sure that these lower front ribs are still connected into your body. And then lengthen both sides of your trunk equally. Lift the front spine fully. Lift the organic body up. Nice. And then exhale, release your arms in a half circle. Walk your right hand again in line with your right hip over to the side. If you can, drop the elbow down. Take this left arm up and over. So the armpit is facing down. So the hand might need to face back. And then sit that left sitting bone down. Bring weight into your left sitting bone. So you get like a counter stretch. So you're stretching right and left simultaneously. And now turn the whole cylinder of your trunk to face up. And breathing into your body. Look underneath your left armpit and up. That's it. Nice, Darren. Inhale, come back up. Walk your left hand over in line with your left hip. Drop the elbow down if possible. Take your right arm up and over. Turn this armpit to face down, hand back. And now sit your right sitting bone down. So as much as he's stretching to your left, you're also stretching to your right side. And then turn the whole cylinder of your trunk to face upward. And you're looking underneath that right armpit or directly forward, whatever works for your neck. He's breathing into the areas that need the opening. Inhale to come back up. So if you needed your belt, it will come around your left thigh. If you didn't need your belt, then you can just take your hands. Otherwise, your belt is around this left thigh. And I'll bring your right fingers behind you. Hold on to your right knee with your left hand. Lift your spine up. Wrap your right arm around. Either take the inside of your left thigh or your belt. And then from there, pull with your hands and turn around the central axis of your body to your right side. So again, check that you're not leaning um, forward or backwards. You're completely in your center. Inhaling to lift and lengthen. Exhaling to turn. Morning, Duran. <laughs> He's doing Kung Fu then. <laughs> and then take one more turning to your right side. And then exhale, release. Those of you using a belt, bring it around your right thigh. And then bring your left fingertips behind you. Hold on to your left knee with your right hand. Lift up your spine, look forward, take your left hand and wrap it around and hold on to your inner right thigh or your belt. And then use your hands to turn, to pull so that you can turn your body to your left side. Check that you're not leaning too far back, not too far forward. So you stay in the central axis of your body and spiraling around that central axis. Exhale, release. Now walk your hands forward, wider than your shoulders. Keep the tops of your shoulders releasing down. Keep the length to the sides of your trunk. Keep the length in the front trunk. So pubic bone to breastbone, lengthen forward. If you can rest your head on a block, you, you can do that or on the floor. Otherwise, you just go as far as you can, moving forward with each exhalation. So folding over your legs and continuing forward. And then slowly from there, come up. Straighten out your legs in front of you, Dandasana. And then get rid of your props, whatever you had, <clears throat> and come and stand on your hands and your knees and the length of your mat. So some of you tighter hamstrings, you might need to take your blocks at the front of your mat or your chair, whatever you need. We're going to hold a long Uttanasana in a moment. But coming to stand on your hands and your knees, take your hands 
about 45 degrees forward of your shoulders, your index fingers facing forward, fingers spread wide, tuck your toes under, and then bend your knees here, send your sitting bones up to the sky, lengthen your spine and lie your chest onto your thighs. Like we did last week, push the outer armpits down to the floor. And now from there, keeping the length in your spine without rounding your upper back body in any way, start to straighten your legs out, keep your sitting bones high up. And then from the middles of your calf muscles, extend down into your heels. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So pressing the hands down like we did last week, pressing the outer armpit area down also, that action that we worked with last week. So you puff open the armpits to the floor, shoulder blades stick onto your back body. Remember for those of you working through anything in the shoulders or fatigue or whatever it is, please feel free at any point to rest in Adamuka Virasana. So it's actually downward facing hero pose. That's actually the translation. We got used to calling a child's pose, but it's actually when you translate it from Sanskrit, it's, it means downward facing hero. <laughs> so just know that. Find more and more length in your spine as you push with your hands and you send your sitting bones higher up to the sky. And then from the sitting bones, descend your heels down to the floor. Now walk your feet forward in the direction of your hands for Uttanasana. And here you have a choice, either feet together if your hamstrings are open or feet apart if your hamstrings are tighter, then you can even make your feet the width of your sticky mat. Feet together, a little bit more advanced and your hands are either on your blocks if you need that or on your chair or flat on the floor if you can keep your legs straight and your spine straight. Those of you with open hamstrings and open spine, you can walk your hands further back so that your hands come beside your heels, pushing your fingers forward and then from there folding forward. Those of you with tighter hamstrings, keep your feet hip distance apart and lengthen your spine forward. Hands are underneath your shoulders, pubic bone to breastbone. Keep that length in the front body. And especially focusing on the length of your spine. So if you need to compromise anything, then rather bend your knees for today. So different uh, days would be different instructions, but for today, make sure you're keeping the length in your spine. And you go to the depth of what your body's allowing you today. So ultimately, finding that inner space so that your higher intelligence can start flowing through you. And you're learning how to listen to what your body needs, what your mind needs in any particular moment. So you find your own integrity, essentially. And in a way, this is what's lovely about the Zoom classes is that you becoming your own authority I'm here to give you some guidance on the external outline of where we're going, but you are experiencing for yourself your own inner journey and feel where do you need to open up more space? Where do you need to activate a little bit more? Find out. All of you are practitioners that have been practicing for some time. So you have that intuition available, that investigative internal mind space where you can really take your mind and find out what's happening inside you. And now from there, bring your hands onto your hips, broadly spread your abdomen back to your lower spine, lift your chest and come up and come to standing. And come and stand in the center of your mat now, facing towards the camera or towards your screen. 
and um, just observe for a moment. So the arm position will either be um, holding on, uh, bringing your hands into Pashima Namaskar or holding onto the opposite elbows. But what I'd like to show you today is that as you turn, when you're turning to the right, turning the left foot in first, okay? So now I'm, I'm only halfway there. So for Pashvottanasana now, the next step, I've got to lift this uh, left heel up so that I can wrap that left hip forward more and then rooting the heel down. So the back leg is the brain of your posture. So this uh, rotation of the inner groin back and out. And then on the front leg, on the right leg, pushing from the big toe, strongly pushing that in so that I can pull the femur bone into the hip socket. So very important action. Okay, we'll, we'll go together. So come and stand in the center of your mat, feet together. Reach your arms out to the side. Either take your hands into Pashima Namaskar, if possible. Don't force it. Or hold on to your opposite elbow. So whatever works for your body today. And then bend your knees broadly, spread your abdomen back to your lower spine. If you have any lower back stuff going on, rather step. Otherwise, jump your feet apart. Outer edges of your feet in alignment with each other. Upper buttocks down, abdomen broadly back and up and lift up your chest. Now turn your left toes. Again, I'm gonna mirror you. Turn your left toes in. Turn your whole right leg out. So turn in that femur bone of your right leg. Now lift up that left heel and wrap that outer left hip forward and then root your left heel down. So that inner left groin rolls back and out to bring that outer left hip forward. Push into the ball of that right big toe so that you plug that right femur head into your hip socket. And now find the length in your spine, upper buttock area down, abdomen broadly back and up. So observe if you feel that you want to go forward very fast. Can you stay up and just find the lift and the length, opening your heart space, turn your abdomen, turn your chest over that right leg, and then from there, keep your thighs drawing up as you move your body forward first and then down over that right leg. So the forward movement more important today to keep the length in the spine. Lengthen with the crown of your head forward. Keep your thighs drawing up. Those of you with hyperextended knees, make sure that your right knee is slightly bent and really explore this pushing of the right big toe down so that you plug that femur head into your hip socket. Elbows, draw them up to the sky. Yes, nice. Shoulder blades deep into your back and explore the shape, especially exploring the length in your spine. Inhale, slowly come back up. Turn your body to face forward. Keep your hand position for the moment. Those of you who are in Pashima Namaskar, if you can, stay or release it. Those of you holding the opposite elbows, now change. Hold on to the other arm on top. And then from there, turn your right toes in. I'm mirroring you. Turn your whole left leg out to the side. So now to get the proper turning, lift that right heel up, wrap that outer right hip forward towards your left leg, and then root your right heel down. So staying upright, roll this inner right groin back and out. We worked with that quite a lot last week. And roll this outer right hip forward towards your left um, foot. Push into the ball of your left big toe. Pull that left femur bone into the hip socket and draw that left hip back. Upper buttock area down, abdomen broadly back and up. Lift your chest up, open your throat so you make space in your body. Keep that space as you fold forward over your left leg. Abdomen, chest, turn it over the left leg, moving forward first and then downward. So focusing on that forward movement. Yerun, draw your uh, right, uh, your left hip more back. Left, yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. And all of you, lift your elbows up. Those of you with hyperextended left legs, make sure that you're slightly bending that knee. 
and again, pushing from the big toe into the big toe so that you plug that femur bone into your hip socket. That also helps to keep the power. Inhale, come back up. Square the outer edges of your feet. Release your arms out to the side. And then jump your feet together, coming to stand in Tadasana. So um, I think most of you know my sun salutations, but I just want to show those of you who are new. So this is where we'll do one. Uh, jumping into dog stretch or stepping. Plank, you can either stay there, drop your knees down, or chaturanga. And then for those of you who are just working on relaxing today, please feel free to, when we do the sign salutations, you can just drop your elbows and stay in your Adha Mukha Virasana. Downward facing hero, okay, is the translation. Otherwise, you'll come up and then from there, coming back to standing. So keep your mat orientation as it is. Come and stand at one end of your mat, feet together. Those of you resting in Adha Mukha Virasana, please take that position. Otherwise, inhale, reach your arms up, find the length in your spine. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, open your collarbones. Press your hands down to the floor, step your feet back a little bit. Bend your knees, lean your body weight into your hands, suck your abdomen back to your spine. And then from there, step or jump, dog stretch. Find the length in your spine, focusing on that. Inhale, come forward into Palakasana on your tippy toes. Collarbones open, either drop your knees down or elbows back, chest forward, chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, or if you feel it in your lower back, drop your pubic bone down. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come up onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees, lie your chest on your thighs. Suck your abdomen back to your spine, press your hands down, look forward. And then either step or hop, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms up. And Tadasana. So if that, I don't know if you guys can hear Nabu, the Siamese cat. He'll figure out that he needs to come through the window in a moment. <clears throat> okay, come up. And come and stand again in the center of your mat. And then just come and sit down from there. So again, you could sit either on your uh, blocks or whatever support you need. And now uh, from there, bend your right knee up and bring the sole of your right foot to your left inner thigh. So for those of you who, um, because this is not so much about the hamstrings, you're starting to go into an open twist. So for those of you who don't benefit from seated like that, you can sit on a chair and you will just be turning to your right side like that. Okay, otherwise, bending that right knee. And just seated like this for a moment and uh, observe. So you're gonna to turn to your right side. And then from there, leaning over, reaching this right arm up. Hello, Nukis. Reaching this right arm up and leaning over to your left side. For those of you who can, you can hold on to the foot, but this is not really the aim of the posture. It's more like an open twist to the right side. So right, left thigh rooted down. Hold on to your right knee with your left hand, right fingers behind you, and twist your body to your right side. Reach your right arm up. Hold on to your right knee with your left hand for today. And then lean your body weight over towards your left foot, palm of the hand facing down, and you either hang out here or you catch the outside of your left foot and spiral your abdomen, your chest, everything over to your right side. Oh, very nice. So nice open twist, just finding that twisting action and that opening of the spine. Inhale to come back up. Straighten your legs out in front of you or sit forward facing on your chair. Are you cleaning yourself? <laughs> and then from there, bending up your left knee, sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Keep this right leg absolutely stable. And then bring your left fingers behind you and hold on to your left knee with your right hand. Turn to your left side. 
and now reach this left arm up and then over your uh, ear and reaching towards your right foot. So again, you don't have to hold today. It's more just about finding that openness in the side body and in the trunk. If you can, you catch the outside of that right foot with your left hand. And just spiraling your abdomen, your chest to your left side. And you can use that right hand on your left knee to pull yourself over. Those of you who are holding the foot, let your, right, uh, your left elbow lift up and back, up and back. Yes, that's a curry. And then from there, inhale to come back up. Straighten out your legs in front of you, Dandasana. And come up to standing from there, standing in the middle of your mat, and then just observe uh, first. If you need to come closer to your screen, please do it. Make sure you can see properly. So we're going to go into Pajra Konasana, and um, two variations. So you can either just stay here with your right hand to the inside of your um, foot, I would suggest some people might need a block or two blocks and just working here. So a very important action is going to be taking this outer left thigh towards your right inner thigh. And it's a very similar turning to what we've just done. Those of you wanting to go further, you're going to take your left arm and bend it and then take your right arm underneath and pull the hands back. If you can't get the bind, there and you want to go into the stronger version, then you can just take a belt in that top arm when we get to that stage and you can use your belt. Okay, so we're going to spend some time here. Please make sure that you, uh, you take it easy if you need to. Those of you wanting to turn it up, please do. If you're going to use your blocks, put them in front of you and then come and stand, feet together. Bring your fingertips to touch, bend your knees and broadly spread your abdomen back and up. And then either step or take a hop with your legs apart. Turn your left toes in, turn your whole right leg out. So turn in the femur, uh, this femur bone in the hip socket and then bend your right knee directly above your ankle. So you in Veda Bhadrasana 2. Those of you using a block, you'll take your block and bring it on the inside of your right foot. Otherwise, your right hand down, your left arm up. And push with this right upper arm into that inner right knee so that you are drawing that outer right thigh towards your left inner thigh. Very important action. Turn your abdomen, your chest open to the sky. Those of you going further, you're going to bend your left arm, your left elbow, take the hand behind your right buttock, bring your right arm underneath and take your hands together. Pull your hands towards your right, your left foot and then stretch your head away from your left foot and now turn your abdomen and turn your chest open to the sky. That's it, yeah, very nice. Legs lean up and back a little bit, if possible. And I can go for a few of you. Turn your body so that your whole front of your body is facing up to the sky. Yeah, that's it. And now from there, keep your abdomen broadly back to your spine. Inhale, come up. Square your outer edges of your feet. Those of you using uh, your block, make sure that your block is on your left side in front. Arms out to the side, turn your right toes in, turn your whole left leg out. So turning this leg in the hip socket, so the femur bone turns, bend your left knee above your ankle. Take your left hand down, either on your block to the inside of the foot or your hand flat. Make sure that the upper arm and that inner knee are connecting and drawing this outer left thigh back towards your right inner thigh. Very important action. Turn your abdomen, turn your chest open. Those of you going further, you're gonna bend your right elbow, hand behind your left buttock, left arm underneath, and then pull your hands so that they pull towards that right foot. 
<clears throat> and draw your head in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's it. And now uh, dare to lean your body weight back. Linda and Megs also lean back and, and like you're going to turn your belly open up to the sky and lie down on your back. Very nice. Inhale, come up, square the outer edges of your feet and then jump your feet together. And now come to stand at the one length of your mat. Make sure your mat is clear. And again, we're going to take a sun salutation or if you feel you'd like to take rest, you're just going to go straight into Adha Mukha Virasana. Otherwise, standing at the front edge of your mat, feet together. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, dive your body forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, open your collarbones. Bring your hands forward of your feet. Bend your knees, lie your body weight into your hands. So your hands are ready for your dog stretch. And then from there, lean your body weight into your hands and hop back, dog stretch. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Yeah, super nice. Take a moment to land there. Draw up your thighs, lengthen your spine. Inhale, wave forward into Palakasana, plank pose. Make sure that your, your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, collarbones open. Either drop your knees or exhale, Chaturanga. Either drop your pubic bone or inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Roll onto the tops of your feet. Massage your toes as you roll back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come up onto the balls of your feet. Plug your femur bones into your hip sockets. Bend your knees, lie your chest onto your thighs. Broadly spread your abdomen back to your lower spine. Look forward where you're going to go. Press into your hands. Inhale, step or hop to the front of your mat. Exhale, Uttanasana. Very nice. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up. And Tadasana, perfect timing. <laughs> okay, so come and have a look uh, closer to the screen. And, um, but, you know, sorry, actually, uh, don't do that yet. Come and stand in the middle of your mat. There's still one more posture, yeah. Um, those of you with tighter hamstrings, either take your blocks in front of you or your chair and then come and stand for Prasarita Paratanasana. Have your hands onto your hips, bend your knees, draw your abdomen back to your lower spine and then jump your feet apart. So outer edges of your feet in alignment with each other. Inhale, lift your spine up. Exhale, fold forward from your hip crease and bring your hands under your shoulders, either on your blocks or a chair or flat on the floor, if you can manage, on your fingertips, whatever works for you. And then first, let's get the Adamoka action. So you're going to walk your hands forward, get the length in the side of your trunk, get the length in the front of your trunk. So it's like you're doing a very wide-legged dog, basically. <clears throat> so your arms are reaching far forward. Okay, so some of you might want to stay here in order to continue getting that length of the spine. You might want to take support for your, for your hands if you can't keep your spine straight. That dorsal thoracic area, bring it deep into your back. Those of you with more open spines, more open hamstrings, if you would like to now walk your hands back and bring your hands in between your feet, then you're welcome to do that. So feel what works for your body. Ensure that you're keeping the length in your spine. So be careful not to round your upper back. So you run if you, you keep your hands more forward if you if you are you can maybe take your yes that's better yes so focus on the length of the spine today before we going into the deeper twists that you've really created that inner space and just noticing and releasing any rigidity or tension or hardness that you might be feeling in your body, that you might be feeling in your breath, in your mind. And like we did last week, also just allowing 
whatever is coming up for you, the moment we leave it alone, it actually disappears by itself. <laughs> so you notice it and then you let it go. So it's like a real journey of self-discovery. Those of you who are, have walked your hands back, walk your hands so they're underneath your shoulders again. Same with those of you with your hands still forward. Hands underneath your shoulders, everybody. Heel toe your feet just one foot closer together. So just a little bit. So your stance is a tiny bit shorter. Bring your hands onto your hips. Abdomen back to your spine. Lift your chest up. Come up to stand. And then jump your feet together. And um, now come a little closer to the camera. So we, we're going to take a vinyasa, we're going to take a flow, but the posture we're going into next is Ardha Matsyandrasana, and we'll approach it from the floor. So from here, we'll step the one knee into the center, the other knee behind, and then opening up the legs, and sitting in between the heels. So here, if you've got any hip flexor stuff going on, knee stuff, lower back, whatever it is, you can either sit on a block or you can even sit on two blocks. And if you are sitting on two blocks, then fold a blanket so that you've got something to press when you're twisting to the side in a moment. So we're gonna start in like a Gamukhasana first. And then from there, we'll raise the leg up and then twisting to the right side. Okay, so if you elevate it, it might be that you can't get your hands down and you can use a blanket behind you, just firmly fold it and you can use that to press down. To come out, we're going back into Gamukhasana, leaning forward so that you can come back onto your hands and your knees and then we'll change sides from there. Okay. When we do the posture, I'll show it from the backside. So come and stand at the front of your mat or go into Adamukha Virasana, whichever posture you're taking for the moment. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward. Inhale, open your collarbones. Hands flat onto the floor. Lean your body weight into your hands. Step or jump, dog stretch. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, wave forward into Palakasana. Either drop your knees or exhale, full Chaturanga. Keep your abdomen back to your spine. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana or Bhujang. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. From Adho Mukha Svanasana, now drop to stand on your hands and your knees. And then if you unsure, you can look towards the camera or otherwise just follow my voice. Step your right knee to the center. Bring your left knee behind your right knee. Open up your feet wide to the side and come and sit in between your feet. So either on a block or two blocks or flat on the floor, whatever works for your body. So your knees are stacked on top of each other right now and just allowing that opening of your outer hips. You can take your hands and move your buttock flesh back so you seat it evenly on both your sitting bones. And then from here, gently raising this right knee up, step your right foot down onto the floor Bring your right hand behind you, fingers facing away from you. And just for a moment, observing the screen. So left arm's gonna come up and you can either hook the elbow over or you can hold with your hand or you can come into a bind by bringing this left arm around and then holding onto your right wrist. So those are the options. Reach your left arm up. Either hook the left elbow over and turn or you can hold on to the knee and turn with your hand, or you come into a bind. So this left arm will come through the uh, right leg. And then the wrapping arm is always the grabbing arm. For those of you that can fully bind, you can hold on either the hands or you can hold on to your right wrist with your left hand. And now turn your abdomen, turn your chest, turn your gaze over to your right side. 
Your right hand is behind you. Draw your right shoulder up and back. Make sure that you've got length in your spine and then spiral around the central axis of your body. So now we're starting to massage into the organs, starting to clear out any stale energy that's in the spinal cord. It, essentially, it's in the central nervous system. So that's why it's so important to find the length first before you start turning so that you're not squashing the energy, but you're giving it space to release. And now from there, turn your chest forward. And before you come out of this posture, again, you're just going to walk your right foot to the outside of that left hip. So the knees are stacked on top of each other, Gamukasana. Lean your body weight forward, come onto your hands, and then come onto your hands and your knees. So those of you using blocks, your blocks are already there. Now step your left knee to the center line. Bring your right knee behind your left knee. Open up your feet wide to the side and come and sit in between your feet, either on your block or two blocks or on the floor. And then just sitting in your Gamukasana, let, let the outer hips marinate for a bit. So there's just that allowing that openness to come, the feeling being. And then raise your right knee up and step your, uh, your uh, sorry, your left knee up and step your left foot. Root it down into the floor because the more you stand that left foot down, the more you can get the length and the lift in your spine. Left fingers behind you, reach your right arm up, make full length in your spine and you either hook the elbow over or hold the knee with your right hand or you wrapping this right arm through your left leg and the left arm around, either holding the hands together or your wrapping arm, your left hand will hold, your, your, sorry, your right hand will hold on to your left wrist for those of you who are getting a full line. So the wrapping arm is the grabbing arm for those of you who are advancing in your practice. Spiral around the central axis of your body. And again, pay attention to with each inhalation, you creating more space in the spinal cord and then on the exhalation, you twist so that you get that releasing of any old stale energy that might still be there. And it's just like clearing out the subconscious on a very physical level, clearing out the organs. So it lifts them from any sluggishness and over digestive processes, helps the digestion. And then from there, turn your chest to face forward. And again, as you release, first let this left foot come back towards your right outer hip. Lean onto your hands and then come onto your hands and your knees. Okay, so if, if for those of you with um, your blocks, just take them out of the way. And then from there, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Just stretch the length of your spine. Or you can rest in Adho Mukha Virasana. But making sure that you're keeping the spinal length. And then from there, coming to seated on your heels for a moment. And just observe the screen. Um, it's, it might be advised for the rest of the practice to, if you have the space, to orientate your mat so that you're facing directly to the camera. In other words, if I were to turn my mat that way, it might be easier to follow. But if you're happy with this orientation, you can also stay like that. But if you want to follow directly, it might be easier like that. I'm going to stay um, horizontally so that you can see me from the side. If you need to come closer to your screen and able to see properly, then do that. So next posture, we're going to go into a twisted lunge from there. 
right foot stepping forward, left knee dropping down. You might want to take some support um, with one of your blankets under your left knee like that. Those of you with hip flexor sensitivity, I would highly recommend you've got your belt on, I imagine, and then you can also take of a fold of a blanket a little bit thinner into that hip area so it also keeps the space into that hip area and this is where we're going so left arm up hooking the elbow over the knee so you want to push the knee against the elbow elbow against the knee and then this right hand is going to come on top and this right hand is pushing down so that you secure that and then turning your body to your right side okay We'll stay for some time and then we'll go back into a dog stretch and we'll take the other side. So from here, come back onto your hands and your knees and just come back into a dog stretch. So you're fully lengthening your spine here. Some of you might just want to stay here or rest in Adha Mukha Virasana. Those of you feeling to really create this inner fire, this detoxing part of the practice, you will come forward into plank again. Exhaling, Chaturanga Dandasana. Choose wisely which one you're taking. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Nice. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So now from Adha Mukha Svanasana, from your downward facing dog, step your right foot forward to the front of your mat. Drop your left knee down. Use a blanket for your left knee if you need it. Keep the left toes tucked under because it keeps the left hamstring activated. Hands onto your hips. If you have hip flexor stuff, use a blanket over your right thigh. So find the lift and the length in your spine here first. Reach your left arm up. And that also creates more lift and length for you. Turn your body to your right side. Hook your left elbow over the outside of that right knee. Press the knee against the elbow, elbow against knee. Stack your right hand on top of your left hand and push down with your right hand so that you secure that left the elbow against the knee. And now lengthen your spine. From your crown of your head to your tailbone, lengthen. And then on the exhalation, turn your abdomen, your chest, and your gaze to your right side and bring progressively that left shoulder more and more over the right foot, keeping the length in your spine while you're turning. Work with your breath. So inhale gives you length. And Marella, you might want to use your blanket there just for your hip. Okay, you're all right. Yeah. yeah, just a thin little, it makes a massive difference to that hip flexor. Yeah. Take one more round of breath there. And then exhale, release, coming back to the center. Bring your hands down, step back, dog stretch. Adha Mukha Svanasana. So you find length in your spine once again. Now from there, step your left foot forward. I'll just demonstrate on this side. You drop your right knee down either on a blanket or on the floor. Keep the right toes tucked under. So it gives you control over that right hamstring. Hands onto your hips. Compact your outer hips. Lift up your spine. So again, if there's any niggle in the hip flexors, take a, a thin layer of blanket over the spine. Makes a massive difference. Also lower back stuff will also help you with that. Reach your right arm up. Lift and lengthen your spine. And now on the exhale, hook that right elbow over the outside of your left knee, knee against elbow, elbow against knee. Stack your left arm, on top, your hand on top of your right hand. Push that right elbow down. And then from there, begin to work. Find the length in your spine first. Crown of your head to your tailbone, lengthen. And then with the exhalation, you turn the abdomen, turn the chest, turn the gaze to your left side. So you bring that right shoulder more and more across over your left foot and you lift that left shoulder up and back, up and back to get the turning. 
working with your breath, explore. How can you find that inner space? And then how can you find the release of any stagnant energy so that there's more circulation of fresh, intelligent energy through the body system? And from there, come back into your lunge. Bring your hands down, step back, Ado Mukha Svanasana. So just finding that neutrality of your spine once again, or rest in Adha Mukha Virasana. From there, inhale, those of you going further, come forward into plank. So if you're working on building the heat, exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, opening up the front spine. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So it's like a wave flowing, moving. And then from there, everybody rest in Adha Mukha Virasana for a moment. Just let your body soften and surrender. And then from there, roll yourself up. And come and sit in Dandasana. Again, we can do this together. Again, remember, you either seated on some height. In, in fact, let's all sit on at least one block. Come and sit on at least one of your blocks because it really helps to get the lift in the spine. Some of you might want to be on two blocks, in which case, again, you're going to have a blanket behind you so that you're twisting like this to your right. Those of you with hip flexor things, blanket over. Those of you who are finding it quite strenuous already in your lower back, you are going to take a chair and with the backrest of the chair facing to your right side and then holding onto the backrest of the chair when we come into the twisted variation. So that's going to give you more of an ability to lift out of the lower back. So everybody else, you are still in Dandasana and you seated on at least one of your blocks. And just observe. So we're going to go into Marichiyasana 3. The right toes turned in slightly. And the more you stand down through that right foot, the more you're going to get the lift in your spine. So again, there are all these variations, either the elbow hooking over or you holding with your hand to turn. Or those of you binding, you're going to come across. So, and it's first down so that you can hook that arm in. Internal rotation of the arm. And then from there, the wrapping hand is a grabbing hand. And then turning to your left side. You might find that because you're sitting on a height, that you might need to go a little bit lower with this arm to keep it secure, but you'll get more of a lift in your spine. Otherwise, those of you not going for this deep twist, you're going to be on your chair. So everybody bend up your right knee, stand your right foot down, turn your right toes slightly in and keep this left leg active. Front thigh to back thigh, toes are facing upward. Bring your right fingers behind your, your back, facing away from you. Reach your left arm up, lift your spine, and now choose either hooking the left elbow over the right knee holding onto the knee with the arm, or you're going to internally rotate this left arm, wrap the arm around your shin so that your left arm comes to your left hip, and then wrapping the right arm around and holding either the hands or holding your right wrist with your left hand. And now stand down onto that right foot, lift up your spine, and spiral around the center to your right side. Find the lift and the length. So that's also why I, I, I prefer if you sit on a block because it, it really helps you to get the length in the spine. The bind might be a little bit more tricksy, but the lift you're gonna get very nicely. Awesome, everybody. So keep working with the length first. And then you're turning and you're bringing that left shoulder more and more over towards the right side of your body. And that, and that right shoulder, you're drawing more and more back and up towards your left side of your body. 
Getting that full massage in your organic body. Again, it's just like that releasing, letting go, stale energy. And then from there, let go. Face forward, straighten your legs out. If you are on your chair, you'll now face the back rest of your chair to your left side and come into sit. Otherwise, be in Dandasana. And then again, be on a block because it just it gives you so much more ability to lift your spine. Bend up your left knee, turn your toes inward. Keep this right leg at the front thigh to back thigh, toes are facing up. Stand into that left foot to lift up your spine. And now bring your left fingers behind you, facing away from you. Reach your right arm up, find the length in your spine, either hooking that right elbow over the outer left knee or holding with your hand, or those of you going for the bind, you're lifting up, rounding slightly to come in. Internally rotate this arm, hook it around so that your hand, your right hand is towards your right hip, and then swing this left arm around and now hold on to your left wrist with your right hand or just hands together. And then stand into that left foot. Lift your spine up and spiral around the central axis of your body. So that right shoulder, that shoulder blade area comes more and more over to the left side of your body. And your left shoulder blade draws up and back, up and back, more towards your right side of your body. Massaging into the abdominal organs, opening up that space in your spine. So it really is like letting go of all oh, stagnant energy so that there's space for the higher intelligence to flow more freely. Exhale, release, Dandasana. And then come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. So Adho Mukha Svanasana is such a beautiful posture for the neutrality of your spine. Those of you feeling to rest, again, you'll be in Adamuka Virasana. Otherwise, coming into a flow, those of you who are working on building the detoxing heat, inhale, Palakasana, plank pose. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Modify as you need to. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Very nice. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, massage your toes as you roll back. And then from there, drop down onto your knees, come to sit on your heels and observe the screen. Again, if you can't see very clearly where you are, then rather come closer to your screen because then it's always much easier to see the demonstration. So we're just gonna take the next lunge a little bit deeper. Those of you who found it quite challenging to be in this first lunge, remember how to modify for your body. You can either stay in the first variation. Those of you going for the second variation, you can use a block if you need it. So this time the arms are gonna do this and we're gonna straighten the back leg. So that'll be the difference. Those of you advancing in your practice and wanting to go for the full Parivrita Pajra Konasana, um, I'll demonstrate that. So what's very important in all of these postures is that this upper arm, this left upper arm, needs to be hooked into this right thigh. Because if it slips out, then you're completely out of the integrity of the posture. So those of you going further, please observe. So this back heel turns down. Make sure that you're not crossing your midline. So that left foot needs to be more in the left lane, right foot more in the right lane. And then you've got to turn everything open and then this right arm comes up and over. Okay, so that's for those of you that are advancing. Otherwise, you'll just take the first variation or you'll take this variation. Okay, 
Come back into your dog stretch on your mat. Lengthen your spine. So now very important as we go deeper that you keep the length of your spine and very important also that you're going to move with integrity and take the variation that works for your body at this moment. Step your right foot forward into a lunge. Dropping your left knee down. Use the blanket for support if you need it. Those of you with lower back or hip stuff, reach your left arm up. And then hook your left elbow over your right thigh. So some of you are going to stay here with your hands on top of each other. Some of you are going to try to reach down with your left hand on the outside of your right foot. Use a block if you can't get your hand to root down. The hand must be flat. So use a block if you need it. Secure this left upper arm over that knee. And now straighten out your left leg behind you. Make sure you're not crossing the midline. Your left leg is in the left lane, right leg in the right lane. So first variation, you're gonna reach your right arm up and turn your body to the sky. Those of you going further, you will take your right hand just on your hip for a moment, bring your left heel flat. And then from there, taking your right arm up and over your ear. Take the variation that works for you. Be in your integrity. I'm, I'm seeing some people have got the arm out. Bend your right knee a little deeper. Bye, Taryn. Have a wonderful day. Those of you um, who have, don't have the arm over, really try and secure it. That means you've got to bend your right knee a little bit more. That's it, Megs. Nice. Those of you going for the full variation, your right arm is up and over your ear. And then holding it there, stay in the posture. See if you can turn a little bit more, the abdomen, the chest. Yes, that's it, Lindy, you are. One more breath, one more little spiral open. Find the depth of the posture for yourself in this moment. Kari, bring that left shoulder, uh, your right shoulder up and back, up and back. A little bit more, up and back. Yeah, and then from there, slowly release down. Well done, everybody. Come onto your hands and come back into dog stretch. Adamuka Swanasana. Have a nice day, Taran. Take a moment in your dog stretch or your Adamuka Virasana. See what works for you, but make sure you're keeping the length in your spine. So that inner space first then that releasing. We're going to go to the second side. So stepping your left foot now forward, drop your right knee down. We're starting in stages. If you know that you are using a block, then take a block on the outside of your left foot. Inhale, reach your left arm up, uh, your right arm up, and then hook that right elbow over the left knee. Some of you, if you did it on the other side, just your hands on top of each other. If you went further, your right hand is now coming down on the outside of your left foot, either on your block or on the floor. Turn your body over to that left side. And then from there, straighten your right leg out. Make sure your right leg is in the right lane, left leg in the left lane. So if you cross your midline, then that's gonna make it a little harder. Rather stay parallel. Some of you are just going to stay in the variation where you take your left arm up. And then some of you might turn that right foot down and take the left arm up and over your ear. But again, be very, very, very aware that you need to keep that right upper arm connected over that left knee, that left thigh. Very important. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hold the posture and it slips out. And now from there, finding your twist, bringing that right shoulder more and more across over that left foot. Explore the posture. Can you get a little bit more length into your spine? And then can you spiral open a little bit more? Very nice, everybody. Wow, I know it's strong. And if those of you in the posture, last little moment, can you dare to draw your left shoulder a little bit more up and back? and turn your chest open. 
And then from there, release. Well done. Ado Mukha Svanasana. And just feeling, feel what's happened to the heart, the lungs, what's happened to the inner organs. Find the length in your spine. And then those of you in Adamukha Svanasana now also drop into Adamukha Virasana, downward facing hero pose. Could have learned to translate it differently now. <laughs> Come and relax and just take a moment there. And then if there are some of you that feel that you would like to fit in another vinyasa here, in your own timing, if you would like to just take a sun salutation, you're welcome to, and then we'll meet again in Adamukha Virasana. Otherwise, just stay and be there. So really be in your own integrity. Feel what nourishes you right now. Sometimes it's a stronger practice. Sometimes it's a little bit more gentle. Then if your hamstrings are on the tighter side, make sure you've got your blocks or your chair at the front edge of your mat and come back into Adha Mukha Svanasana. So come back into your dog stretch. As full length in your spine. And then walk your feet forward. So Uttanasana, either with your feet apart, again, if your hamstrings are a little tighter, then make your feet as wide as your sticky mat. Hands onto your blocks on whichever height you need. Again, the focus is on keeping the length in your spine. Those of you with open hamstrings, open spine, your feet can be together. And you can bring your hands back and then from there fold forward. So take whatever shape works for you. Lengthening in the spinal cord. And then from Uttanasana, bring your hands onto your hips, broadly spread your abdomen back to your lower spine and now come up to standing. And just come a little closer to the screen. So we're going to go into um, shoulder stand and different variations. If you've got your moon flow, your mat will be against your wall and you'll just have your legs up the wall. Those of you who do not feel right now to go into a halasana posture, which means your legs over your head, which is quite a deep forward bend, you can also be at the wall and you can from here come into your shoulder stand so that you don't have to come into halasana. Okay, that's one option. Those of you coming into shoulder stand, please use your blankets and if you want to come into halasana and your legs are a little bit tighter, then what you'll do is you'll take a, a, a chair for your legs so that when your legs come over your head, you've got a chair there. The setup is two blankets, three is even better, but I'm not going to push it. Two blankets uh, folded like this so that the whole length of your upper arm can go on there. Neat edge of your blankets are going to come towards the where your head is going to be. So one blanket, second blanket, okay? And then the second blanket, I mean, if you can have all of the height, but it's more advised to have your head on something soft as well. So then the second blanket you'll open up like that. Or otherwise, if you've got thin blankets, rather keep them both like that. And then folding over the foot end of your mat, over the blankets. So you've got the neat edge of the blankets open, thumbs distance. So the reason why we use this is to preserve your neck in the long run. Um, those of you with our younger props, you can use your four foam setup. And then you've got two bricks here or your bolster. And now take your belt, everybody, and make a loop in your belt so that your loop in your belt is from your armpit to your armpit. And the belt placement is above your elbow points. So the reason why we use this is also to keep the posture connected because what happens very often in shoulder stand is the elbows pull out to the side and then the whole posture collapses. So with the belt, it, it keeps the posture moving up away from gravity. 
So to come in, if, if, you, if you know exactly what you're doing from here, then you can come in, uh, into your halasana. Otherwise, continue looking. And you're going to lie down with your um, it's tops of your shoulders a thumb's distance away from the edge of your blanket. Hands down. Your belt is around one of your upper arms. Those of you using a chair, if you can't straighten your legs easily, you've got your chair behind you. So you'll be in your halasana with a chair. If you don't need a chair, your feet are going to come onto the floor. And then once you're in halasana here, that's when you're going to put your belt on. So once you're in your halasana and you've dropped onto your shoulders, that's where you put your belt on. So very important that your feet can be rested. And this is where we'll meet in halasana with your arms, your palms of your hands facing up. Okay, your belt on, and that's where we'll meet. So getting yourself into that position, and then just waiting. Those of you at the wall, your legs are at the wall, and you're just relaxing in that Viparita Karani. And if you have any questions, please, please ask me. Again, listen to the integrity of your own body. So your belt comes around the above your elbow points. Once you in Halasana and you've rocked onto the tops of your shoulders by bringing your shoulder blades deep into your back, then let go of your hands and turn your palms of your hands up so that your, uh, your, uh, your inner upper arms can roll up and out and you're standing on the very tops of your shoulders. Stretch out your legs in Halasana. Move the fronts of your thighs to the backs of your thighs so that there's space in your spine. And now bend up your elbows and bring your hands onto your back. Those of you at the wall, if you would like to come into your shoulder stand, you can also continue with us. Those of you with your hands on your back now, raise your legs up straight into shoulder balance. If you're at the wall, again, tuck your shoulders under. Similarly, hands onto your back and then you lift your legs up. So, um, you are, Ruth, you, you find you were just one step ahead. You, you're okay where you are. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're perfect in your, in your shoulder stand. So, we're all up into that shoulder stand now. Um, bring your legs together. Compact your outer hips. And now feel into the base of the posture. Are you equally placed on both of your elbow points? Are you equally placed on both of your upper arms and both of your shoulders? Sometimes there's a tendency to lean too much to one side or too much to the other side. Make sure you are perfectly balanced. Notice if there's any discrepancy. And then see, can you walk your hands a little bit more down onto your shoulders? And then push your hands up so that you're lifting the back ribs upward. Compact your hips and lift from your inner groins to your inner ankles up. So we're going to stay for a few breaths. Those of you who feel to come down at any point, remember to take your belt off before you come out of the posture. It will hold for another few moments. And then from there, coming back into Halasana or slowly descending your buttocks down the wall. In Halasana, remove your belt. Turn your hands down to the floor and then very, very slowly unrolling your body and come to land with your knees bent, your feet flat on the floor and just take a few moments to be there. Those of you at the wall, you'll bend your knees. 
is towards your chest, so your feet are on the wall. And then from there, roll your body onto your side and then come up. I just want to show you all how we're going to do Shavasana. So there's, there's one minute left. Um, those of you who can stay longer, please stay longer. But what I'd like you to show you about the Shavasana today, um, of course, you can have blankets for your warmth or any other support you need. But one of your blankets, take it so that when you are lying in your Shavasana, this one extra blanket is going to come onto your forehead. So it's over your eyes, above the bridge of your nose, but having the weight of the blanket resting your forehead down. And then coming into your Shavasana in this way. I'll stay for a bit so you can see the weight of the blanket resting your forehead down. And whatever other props you need, you can set yourself up like that. So really allowing the frontal brain lobes to relax. So that great function of the thinking mind, but just softening it. And again, the, the blanket is folded quite thick so that you, you really get the weight and not over the nose, let the nose be free. And you're just resting the forehead. Resting the front brain. Take a few complete exhalations to let go and surrender. Gently allow your breath to become a little fuller and deeper once again. Bend your elbows and bring your hands either to your abdomen or to your chest. Bend your knees to step your feet onto the earth. And then reach your right arm up beside your right ear and roll your body onto your right side. Just stay there for a moment. And then press your hands down into the earth and come up to seated in whatever posture feels comfortable for you. With your palms of your hands together at your heart, your spine lifted and your eyes softly looking inward. And just take a moment here to honor that space 
that you've created inside you for that higher intelligence to flow more freely. Namaste. Thank you all for your awesomeness and have a wonderful day. If you want to stay for a chat, please unmute yourself. Otherwise, have a happy one. <laughs> Bye, everybody.